Might be coming in a bit quiet, maybe, possibly, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, welcome to the stream tonight. Friday night, made it through another week. So thankful for the upcoming weekend here. Um, as previously, previously, I can speak, previously uh, teased and also kind of declared. New game tonight, starting for the channel. 428, 428, 400, 2028, 20, Shibuya Scramble, a game that, as far as I know, is described as a visual novel type game. Um, I don't know a ton, but I was heavily recommended this game from a couple of people. And I said, you know what? Why the fuck not? I think this is the channel's first visual novel type game. Uh, it is a Spike Chunsoft game. So I should start the stream by saying there is a small chance. No, I won't even say small. I'd say uh, somewhere in between small and medium sized chance that maybe this stream gets fucked up by Spike Chunsoft at some point. Uh, as far as I know, somewhat kind of, um, known for some games, uh, being shitty about streaming and stuff. So if that ends up happening, there's not, again, a ton that we can do and we'll just, you know, have to do something else. But, um, we'll see. There's a chance that this just gets all fuckered to, to hell, uh, in which case, you know, we'll try to move on and not be too upset about. Um, as far as I know, this game is zany in all... Like I said, very little known about this game. Uh, zany, uh, crazy, uh, visual novel-esque. Stuff like that. Um, but, I'm excited. Y'all have to... Uh, uh, you know, have to read. I play some visual novels, so games that could be categorized in that category. Um, but usually not on like stream and such. And so it's different. But you're gonna end up getting me reading, I assume, a lot. Uh, I do know, like I said, not a ton known uh, about the game, but um, it has, from the little research I did, some reading sections, some video sections, some gameplay sections, and apparently it has a very good story and a good gameplay kind of system in there where it's telling the story. I don't want to say too much because I obviously don't know too much either, but it tells the story of multiple characters. And they intertwine and shit, which is great. Sounds great. This is a game. This will be a main tent pole. Um, I should also say that coming up here, we got a weekend. I would imagine tomorrow at least being a two stream day, uh, something earlier in the day and then something later at night, uh, most likely. Um, and I would say there's a good chance, unless I change how I'm feeling, I would say a good chance the earlier stream will dip our toes back into checking out Death Stranding months after I stopped playing it and I, you know, finished it a while back. Um, I think it'd be cool to revisit that for now. And then the night stream, I don't know yet. I'm still thinking. Depends on how this goes. Maybe it'll be more of this. Maybe we'll go back to fuck, destroy all humans, because that's still something I kind of want to tackle and finish. Um, so we'll see. Night stream will be a wild card, but earlier part in the stream, in the day, I mean, will be uh, most likely death stranding. Uh, okay, so again, really hoping that once I click new game, it doesn't. The stream doesn't go to shit. That's the uh, 
the main concern I have and why I'm only partly hesitating on clicking into new game. Let's go. Select a bookmark to save to. I don't think I can select a bookmark. I think it's telling me I can only pick number one. It was not letting me move. Oh, I had to clear it. That's a very odd way of managing the menu. Let me move the mic back here a bit. Okay. I'm ready to uh, envelop myself in a novel. Envelop myself in a story. You know, we had finished uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake a little bit ago. This is essentially taking its place now on the schedule. Do you want the guide to gameplay to be displayed? We recommend that first time players select yes. I'll pick yes. Whoa, a lot, lot, lot of clicking beeps and boops. The story is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and instances either are products of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously. And your resemblance to actual person living or dead ends or, or locale something. Are you ready? I'm actually really excited for this. I can't, um, I can't promise that the stream tonight is going to be super long unless I get super wrapped up into this. Um, I may have to end a bit on the shorter side. Oh my god. Okay. right into it. Audio seems a bit loud, maybe. I'll check on that in a bit. <laughs> there, we got some opening credits. Great. Very intense opening music. Look at that soccer court on the roof. Soccer court? Field? Indoor soccer court? Indoor soccer field. Something. Theme song. I'm gonna, while this is going on, I'm gonna check my audio against this really quick, see if I'll need to turn it down. Oh, it's going. It's it's fine for right now. Shinjuku hostage situation, okay. Middle aged man in a ski mask. Barricaded himself inside. Okay. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. Shit's happening. The hell? The hell is going on? Of course, four two eight. The locale here. I assume that's where the store is taking place. She 
Bowie's story is yours to tell. Oh, well. Thanks. Oh, shit. Oh! Oh, we're- oh, we're going right into it. Okay, so like I said, it's like a visual novel, but as far as I know, it has some, like, live-action shit. So... And you know me, live-action video? In a video game? Yes, please. Alright, so it says, as you play through the game, the various mech- <laughs> I can't read. As you play through the game, the various mechanics will be explained. In 428, you follow the stories of multiple protagonists at once. Your decisions impact their experiences as you read the story. What does the day hold in store? Their fate is in your hands. Hopefully, you can see them all through to the end. To start, you have two characters. Uh, and of course, fucking Japanese pronunciation, abound. So you get to hear me awkwardly pronounce Japanese names. Shinya Kano and Achi Indo. Let's begin by checking out Kano's story. Yeah, but what if I want to start... Oh, it's telling me to keep out. Hachi. Kano. So... There's gonna be like a time chart? Oh my god. I like these poses. Look at these like live poses, like they're moving. This is good. This is good. Oh my god. Intense. Everything is intense about this game. Just two more minutes to go. Shinya Kano noted the time again on his watch, scowling at the slow creep of the second hand. The time was 9.58 a.m. Furrows of consternation creased his forehead. He wasn't nervous, but he knew better than to expect everything to go smoothly. Keeping a level head was proving rather difficult. There was no room for failure. Lives were on the line here. Very intense. He eyed his surroundings. Was the perp really going to show up? When? Where would he be coming from? How would he make his approach? The Shibuya scramble was as packed as ever. A throng of people crossing this way and that, blissfully unaware of the dozens of detectives hidden in its midst. Detectives! All right, another minute and a half. There he is. Kano glanced down at his watch yet again. A mere 30 seconds had passed. Detective Kano had been with the enforcement arm it's kind of hard to read the white writing on some of the parts here. Uh, Detective Kano had been with the enforcement arm of Shibuya's criminal affairs section for a year now, but he'd never been part of an operation this big before. He eyed the young woman standing beside the statue up ahead. She was small enough to get lost in the crowd, and she carried a nondescript Atachi case. Hitomi Asawa, age 19. The Itachi case in her hands contained a full 50 million yen in cash. Is that how you say that word, Itachi? Yesterday, her twin sister Maria had been kidnapped. This was the ransom payment. The culprit had called Hitomi last night at home, referring to her by name and telling her to wait by the statue of Hachiko in Shibuya. It was almost time, but nothing. Kano was staring fixedly at the second hand on his watch when a homeless man sitting on the sidewalk murmured just loud enough for him to hear. 
Come on, Kano. Quit looking at your watch so much. What if the kidnapper sees you? Kano tried to look nonchalant as he lifted his eyes, but the scruffy character continued. You're too nervous. Just relax already. You're the one acting suspicious, Sasa. Sasayama. Kano frowned. Why would some homeless guy be talking to me? Yuji, Yuji Sasayama was a senior officer of the Shibuya Precinct's Criminal Affairs Division, five years older than Kano. Guide, some words and phrases in the text appear in blue. Like Shibuya Precinct. It's not a very distinct blue. These are called tips. Press square button to underline a tip, then press X. This will let you read some extra info relating to that word or phrase. Oh, I want to read some extra info relating to a word or phrase. There are tips containing general knowledge and ones that are 428 specific. These are marked with a magnifying glass and a 428 respectively. Official name Shibuya Central Precinct. Precinct. Responsible for the safety Excuse me, of approximately 200,000 people in 32 neighborhoods, including, oh, shh, yeah, okay, here we go. Ihara, Yugu, Yugu Sudanicho, Uda Goacho, Ibisu, Ibisu Nishi, Ibi, uh, Ibisu, Ibisu Minami, Oyamacho, I'm gonna read this all, damn it. Kamiyamacho, Sakura Gagacho, Sazazuka, Sarugakucho, Shibuya, Shoto, Jingome, Shinsencho, Jinan, Sendagaya, Daikanyamacho, Doganzaka, Tomagaya, Nanpai Daicho, Nishiara, Haragaya, Hachima, Hachiamacho, Hatsudai, Hagashi, Hiru, Honmachi, Maruyamacho, I feel like that's a repeat somewhere, Moto Yoyogicho, Yoyogi, and Yoyogi Kami Zonocho. Woof. He always went a little overboard with the disguises. Oh, was, yeah, it was a disguise. Okay, he's not a real homeless person. He claimed it was all part of the job, but word around the station was that he just liked playing dress up. Also, realize, I'm not gonna be able to remember any voices I give these people, and voices are gonna constantly be changing. That's what you get when I get, when you, when I, if you're, if you're new, this is new, the stream, I always change up voices. I don't have the memory to remember anything. And I'm also a terrible actor slash uh, 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 speaker. Hey pal, spare some change. Sasayama lurched to his feet and shuffled in close to Kano. Hey, knock that off. Fittingly for the part, Sasayama reeked pretty badly. Well, ain't no suspicious now. Ain't so suspicious now, huh? He clung to Kano with mock camaraderie, despite the younger man's attempts to pull away. Come on, Sasayama. Cut it out. Sasayama's blith, 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 blith confidence rattled Kano's nerves. I know how to speak. Of course, there was good reason for that confidence. This was Kano and Sasayama's jurisdiction but they were positioned a good distance from where the handoff was to take place. A particular region over which an organization or a member thereof has control or authority refers here to the areas under the jurisdiction of various police precincts. Metropolitan Police Department, the pinnacle of Tokyo's police hierarchy, has vastly more authority than local precincts, but since many officers wind up needing to work with both, the outright rivalry between the two isn't as notable as TV dramas make that seem. The statue of Hachiko was surrounded by elite investigators from one of HQ's special investigation teams. Sometimes two or more tips will appear on a single screen. Press square repeatedly to change which words are underlined. 
highlight the tip you wish to read, then press X, continue pressing that, or circle to return <coughs> to reading the story. So you can just kind of... Oh, I see. That's weird that it goes to the... A bump, 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 bump. That's some weird order of things, but... Statue of Hachiko. Oh, look, we got little pictures. The green frog. Bronze statue of a dog erected in 1934. The dog was famous for loyally waiting for his absent master. Well known as a meetup spot outside of Shibuya Station. Other popular meetup spots at the station are the display car for the original Tokyo 5000 series, commonly known as the Green Frog, and the Moye statue by the west entrance. Here refers to the Metropolitan Police Department. Tokyo Police Section responsible for managing 101 precincts within the city. Don't make me read them again. Please, Japan's largest police organization. In addition to policing Tokyo, it has various other duties and authorities for maintaining public order in the capital. Kano and his partner were just there to provide backup if the kidnapper attempted to flee. Look, just try to relax. We fine. Sasayama gave him a wink. A moment later, the radio squawked in Kano's ear. All right, everyone, it's time. Keep your eyes open. Oh shit. I'm old. The voice coming in through the earpiece was Koji Kuze. Ku, 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 Kuze. Kuze. HQ's operations director. The individual responsible for directing the investigation in the event of a serious crime. The task force is set up. The operations director is the one who assumes command. TV dramas and other fictional accounts often feature some young prodigy, prodigy from the MPD as operations director, but in reality, the physician usually goes to a proven veteran. Until last year, he'd seen the Shibuya Precinct's head detective and Kano supervisor. He'd been. Gonna be a lot of misreading here. We don't know when the perp is going to make contact. Don't let your guard down. Kuse's low, gravely voice echoed in Kano's ear. You don't sound too worried, Kuse. Kano winced at Sasayama's words. Look at, look at him. Look at that smug in the back. How could the man be so nonchalant? The appointed time had come and gone. Something should be happening. What? Kano smacked himself in the thigh to release a little tension. The sound was louder than he'd intended. Though the suit hit his muscular physique, it did little to dampen the noise. He needed to stay focused. He might be called to action at any moment. The department handled abduction cases according to a certain standard investigation procedure. Was it an attempt to extort money, or was the motive something personal? The answer to that question determined how they deal with the criminal. And based on the investigation team's initial findings this time around, they probably weren't dealing with a professional kidnapper. Still, in all likelihood, it was someone with quite a long rap sheet. Probably someone who knew the family. So far, they had few leads on who might bear such a grudge. With the situation so unclear, the plan was to apprehend whomever came to make the handoff on site. If the culprit ran with the money, there would be no guarantee of the hostage's well-being. Hmm, still nothing. Sosyama murdered. M -m murdered. Muttered. There he is. He's here. Kuze broke in, his voice spiking it into an excited chirp. Kuze's particularly vocal quirk. Whenever he gets overly flustered, excited, or panicked, he slips into childish register, prone to babbling and pitching his voice. Subject is a young male in his 20s, wearing a bandana and an orange hoodie. Kuze, normally calm and stoic, was now squawking like an excited child. That only happened when he got particularly worked up. Kano and Sasayama steeled themselves. They could see the subject now. A 20-something male nonchalantly approached Hitomi to talk to her. Alright, people. Be ready to grab this guy. Kuze was stationed in the mobile command center, not far from the intersection. Keeping tabs on the situation via video surveillance from the camera team. The young man started speaking enthusiastically to Hitomi. The detectives watched, uncertain. Was this really the kidnapper? Uh-oh. Things are happening. You'll encounter selections like these during the story. 
These choices will change the lives of other people, in addition to changing your own fate. Use up and down to make your choice, then press X. Oh, so we were affecting the story here. Current choice will not impact you or any of the other protagonists. Oh, so it's telling us this is not an important first choice. Um, that's gotta be him. Connor took a step forward, then hesitated. Or the situation still wasn't entirely clear. He needed to get a better look at things. Uh, if I... I believe the orange means I'm selecting it, so I'm gonna say that. The situation still wasn't entirely clear. He needed to get a better look at things. The newcomer held a bundle of letter-sized paper, which showed to Hitomi as he went on talking. He tried to hand her one of the papers, but she pointedly ignored him. Undeterred, the man kept trying to foist it off on her. Hitomi refused to respond, becoming as motionless as the statue of Hachiko behind her, until finally the man gave up and walked away. Gonna be plenty of talking here. I'm gonna to keep wetting my whistle. <laughs> that face back there. Very good. Guess it wasn't him. Kano felt the tension of the moment linger in his spine. Guy must have been hitting on her. Sasayama murdered. M murdered again. <sighs> Succeeding at meeting someone on the fly like this takes a special knack. Looks are also important. <laughs> Sometimes, of course, the person trying to get your attention out of nowhere is just trying to make a sales pitch for a product or a nearby establishment. At first glance, it isn't always easy to tell the difference. I mean, she is pretty cute and all. It's got to be like a wig on him, right? <laughs> he had a point. Though, of course, something in Sasayama's voice made Kano brace himself. She's got nothing on my me, Chan. Excuse me? Me, Chan was Sasayama's wife. They'd gotten married just last month. Let me tell you, Kano, married life is the best. You gotta hurry up and give it a try for yourself. This was Sasayama's favorite topic lately, and Kano was getting more and more fed up with it. Sasayama, come on, just knock it off, okay? phrase had become a common refrain of his since the department partnered them. Fine, fine. Let's talk about your girlfriend then. Huh? Now, you can't be serious. Sasayama leaned in close again. What's she like? We are not having this conversation. Kind of mur Every time it's gonna be mur muttered, I'm gonna say murdered. Kano murdered, looking away. Aw, oh, come on. Sasayama set his hand on Connor's chest, still playing the homeless troublemaker. Show me your phone. Let me see your lock screen. Huh? Sasayama pawed for the phone. You've got a pic of your girl on your lock screen, yeah? I... I do not. But he did. It was scary how on the mark Sasayama's instincts were. Hey, cut it out. We're in the middle of an investigation. I am investigating. Sasayama chuckled as he plucked the phone from Connor's pocket. Look at that phone! <laughs> this music is also killing me. His face scrunched up with astonishment as he looked at the lock screen. The heck's this? It... it's not... Ain't... ain't this Masi... uh... Masa... Mas, Masami? Mas, mas, Masami? Masami, probably. Masami Nagahama? A national star tends to play the heroine. Heroine. On national morning soap operas or national historical dramas. Her songs have been a series of national hits. She's even slated to host the year end national singing competition program. Everything's about her. Everything about her is national. Look at her! Kano realized he had to bite the bullet. No, that's my girlfriend. Her name is Rumi. Rumi. And she's... Sasayama, cut him off. You're telling me this ain't Masami Nagahama, the famous actress. Because this right, he right here is Masami Nagahama. Like I said, you sly old dog trying to make... Uh, trying to make like you're dating Masami Nagahama. I'm not. I mean, I guess Rumi does kind of look like her. Sasayama let out a huff. 
For real? You really think I'm gonna fall for that? There's nothing to fall for, I swear. Sussy, I'm a scout, unconvinced. All right, then why don't you marry her? Classic. Kano stammered, but he had no answer. The truth was, he would have happily married her already, but there were obstacles that need to be overcome. Okay, playtime's over. Let's focus on the job. Sasayama handed back Kano's phone and turned his gaze back to Hitomi. Kano let out a quick, uneasy sigh, but his shoulders did feel looser. Maybe Sasayama had been trying to relieve a bit of the tension. Maybe he should be grateful. I assume every time save is popping up, game is like auto saving. What happens if I hit? Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Auto save on good. Excuse me. Not a ton of settings, to be honest. Not even like audio audio settings. Um, bad ending list. <laughs> This is a list of bad endings. Here you can check for hints as to why, as to why, why things ended as badly as they did. Yeah. There's no hints. But that's interesting. That is an interesting, like, I'm just gonna pop this mistake again at me. Um. Oh no, now I have hiccups. Oh God. So I assume if you get a bad ending, then it'll be like, hey, here's where you fucked up. Cause I assume there's probably like a, especially if there's like a, it's like interweaving stories. I assume there's gonna be some kind of like, like a timeline mechanic or something. That's my guess. Guide, how to play choices, tips, points of note. Oh, I guessed right. Main menu allow you to turn auto save on, regardless of whether auto save is enabled. The game will still save important data. Do not turn the power off when game is saving. These are things I've. Uh, read before. Not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, give me some uh, more interesting. Okay. By now, several minutes had passed since the guy with the papers had gone away. He peered at Hitomi. The strain on her face was visible. In addition to the weight of the Itachi case itself, the 5,000 10,000 yen bills it held weighed close to six kilos. Her slender arms must have been getting tired. Still, she refused to set the case down. She wasn't taking any chances with her sister's life. The kidnapping case had begun the day before, at around 7 p.m. Oh, spooky music! This is MPD Dispatch. The Shibuya Precinct is reporting a missing person. Believed to be an abduction. In Japanese law, the act of indirectly luring or deceiving someone into the control of a third party is known as kidnapping. Using forcible threats or violence to achieve the same result is known as abduction. Ah. Subject is Maria Asawa, a 19-year-old student at Midior... Midoriyama Academy, last seen at the LL Diner near campus. A man was allegedly seen forcing her into a car nearby. All officers in the vicinity reported the scene at once. Kano and Sasayama had been working a burglary case in Jingume's 5th district when they got the call. The two arrived at the L Diner at 7.15pm. At roughly the same time, several other officers showed up to secure the area, blocking off entry to nearby roadways and monitoring the surrounding establishments. Inside the restaurant, Kano and Sasayama were met by the girl who'd reported the kidnapping. It was the victim's twin sister, Hitomi. Could you tell us about when Maria was taken, starting from the very beginning? Kano said, keeping his voice low. I... 
My sister and I, we were supposed to go to a party together today. Hitomi was trembling, her voice hoarse. But I messed up the time. I showed up right at 7, an hour later than I was supposed to. So Maria had gone alone to the party, a mixer for locals and exchange students. Hitomi, arriving late, had showed up just in time to glance out through the restaurant window and see her sister getting shoved into a car. She described the vehicle as a blue station wagon with Japanese make. Why? Why would someone something like this happen to her? Tommy held back her tears, but she was shaking all over. Did you get a look at the kidnapper? Yes, it was a man, middle-aged. There was another eyewitness, Leland Palmer. He identified himself as a lecturer at Hitomi and Mar Maria's school. I saw it too. It's like Hitomi says. I heard Hitomi cry out, and so I, uh... I went to the window to look. This guy automatically does not seem trustworthy. And his Japanese was halting as if he hadn't been in the country very long. Oh, maybe it's just he's not good at Japanese. That's fair. And I think that maybe the kidnapper was working alone. Elon explained that he'd seen the man shove Maria into the back seat, then clamber into the driver's seat. If he had any comp, if he had an accomplice, wouldn't they have been driving? Neither Tommy nor Leland had gotten a look at the suspect's face. Kano was interviewing others who had been on the scene looking for other potential witnesses when his phone rang. It was Yoshio Kaji Kajiwara, one of the senior detectives. We set up a task force for the investigation. Get back to the station once you have a handle on the situation there. Barely half an hour passed between the time the kidnapping was reported and the time the task force began operation. Roughly 150 people are working on the case in the Shibuya Precinct's conference room. The main force at work is HQ's first special investigation unit. Additionally, uh, other detective sections, a riot squad, and investigators from neighboring precincts have been assembled. Again, white writing on this white background. When Kano and Sasayama got back to the precinct station, Kuze had already arrived from HQ. He informed them that a response team had been formed to investigate the victim's home. In a case where someone had been abducted for ransom, it is often difficult to resolve the situation without cooperating with the, vic with the victim's family, but the family can also be a hindrance in making an arrest. To help guide the family's actions, a response team is assembled the station at the victim's home, led by an investigator with the proper training. Kano could feel a peculiar tension in the air. Unfamiliar MPD detectors scurried to and fro around the Shibuya offices, pulled one of them aside to get a quick update. An hour had now passed since the kidnapping. There had been one new development. The perpetrator had made a threatening call to the victim's home. He said the following. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. by Hachigo in Shibuya. Have the sister Hitomi bring 50 million yen. If not, the girl's life is forfeit. Kajiwara from the precinct was put on the response team, along with detectives from elsewhere who'd received special training in abduction cases. Normally, a local precinct detective wouldn't have gone uh, undercover in a victim's home. Kuze, however, had decided that having a knowledgeable local lo local was crucial and had sent Kajiwara along. Can read. Promise. The detectives disguised themselves as delivery people and movers to make their way inside without arousing suspicion. Arriving there at 8.30, the response team had come prepared to run a trace of kidnapper con contact of the family a second time. Trace, the act of pinpointing the source of an incoming phone call. Police are not allowed to do this independently without oversight. They must go through a formalized process that includes securing the cooperation of the phone company. In the past, conducting the trace itself would take time, but nowadays acquiring the location can be practically instantaneous. But there were no further calls. Kano checked his watch again. 20 minutes had now passed since the time designated for the ransom standoff. The kidnapper had yet to appear. Crap, you think he might have spooked, we might have spooked him? He wondered aloud. 
Hey, stay calm. Sasayama scanned the passing throng. He's just playing with us. Why'd this guy even pick this place? Kano voiced the question he'd been asking himself ever since he'd heard the kidnapper's demands. Sasayama shrugged. Figure you must want to blend in with the crab, nab the money, and disappear before anyone knows he's there. Would be my guess. In that case, why not pick Shinjuku or Ginza? The big crowd didn't just benefit the kidnapper, after all. It also allowed the police to use the sea of people to conceal their own operation. Right now, there are 50 detectives stations within a 50 meter radius of where Hitomi stood. The kidnapper would be taking a major risk. I didn't even see the word risk there for a second. If his plan was to nab the ransom money and run. That's what bothered Kano. Any criminal with half a brain would know better than to do a handoff in front of Hachiko. You're overthinking things, pal, Sasuyama grumbled. No, I'm not. Connor reached out into his pocket and pulled his notepad. This was Connor's dick diary. <sighs> Which he always kept close at hand. Sasuyama rolled his eyes. That thing again? Connor ignored him, flipping through the notepad pages. Aha! Here it is! Dick Dictum, number 89. The more irrelevant, irrelevant something seems, the more relevant it's bound to be. It was a favorite saying of Kyozo Tatino, Tat Tatino, an assistant inspector from the Shibuya precinct. Tatino was the kind of Tostino, uh, was the kind of detective Kano aspired to be. For the current operation, he'd been placed in charge of Atomi's personal safety. He was in position to defend her as soon as the ransom had been handed off. Of course, Tomi hadn't been informed of how much protection she was under. There was a risk that if she acted too secure, it might alert the kidnapper. I think Tatino has the right idea. Sasuyama snorted quietly. Maybe. I mean, he's a great detective. Don't get me wrong. But do you know how many irrelevant things there are to consider? Again, Kano ignored him. It didn't matter if anybody else understood. Kano had faith in Tatino, uh, as both a detective and as an individual. He had first witnessed Tatino's brilliance during a standoff at a financial company three years earlier. A man had sh shut himself in an office, splashing gasoline everywhere and threatening to set the place ablaze. While the others hesitated, Tatino unflinchingly doused himself with gasoline and strode into the building, where he managed to talk the man down and secure the scene. The others had been awestruck by Tatino's actions, and Kano, who at the time had been content to be a run-of-the-mill policeman, had found it quite inspiring. Still, you know, Sasuyama murdered under his breath. Murmured under his breath. <laughs> murmured and muttered is now becoming murdered. As great a detective as Tatino is, it's not like anyone else in the world has ever heard of him. I suppose not, Kano said. So? Only time anyone hears a cop's name is if he's caught up in some scandal or killed in the line of duty. I mean, it doesn't really seem fair, does it? Kano just shrugged. It was a strange definition of unfair, really. I mean, you've got celebrity she uh, chefs and celebrity hairdressers and stuff, so how come no celebrity gumshoes, you know? Look, please, can you just focus on what we're doing here? Connell rubbed his eyes, then turned his attention back to Hitomi. What's the matter? Didn't sleep? Not enough, I guess. Did you eat? Didn't have time. Between bringing in supplies for the base of operations, readying the team's vehicles, Photocopying hundreds of documents and various other tasks, Kano had barely slept the previous night and hadn't gotten a meal or another either. What have you been doing? Sasuyama puffed out his chest, saving up my energy for today. So you were sleeping? A base of operations is usually set up in a large room at the precinct, such as an auditorium. MPD had uh, and precinct investigators assemble there. Communications, equipment, investigation, resources, and such are brought in. Because of the scale and scope of these activities, newspaper reporters can be liable to notice. And so, in cases such as kidnap, yeah, liable to notice. Okay. And so, in such in cases such as kidnapping or your victim's personal safety is at stake, flow of information is tightly controlled. 
Kano gave a wry chuckle at his partner's lack of shame. There he is! Kuze's voice chirped suddenly through Kano's earpiece. A man in his 20s wearing a sleeveless red jacket. He's carrying a garbage bag. Oh, it's, sh it's shady! A young man had emerged from the crowd about 15 feet from where Hitomi was standing. He strode toward her, a sinister look on his face. He didn't match Hitomi's description, but Kano felt a jolt of nerves all the same. Maybe the kidnapper had hired some young street punk to snatch the ransom payment. That our guy? What do you think, Kano? Salsiyama whispered. Yeah, I think he's got to be. This was it. Kano swallowed a lump in his throat. He bent his knee, ready to act fast. Blood rushed to his leg muscles, banishing the stiffness that had begun to take hold. Could this be the culprit? Or perhaps? The young man tried to snatch the briefcase from Hitomi, but she clung to it with desperate strength. It was him! The detectives rushed in. Oh, fuck! Whoa, hey, what the hell? The young man cried out frantically and tried to dart away, but the officers closed and forcing him bodily to the ground. Target secured. Oh, jeez, I think we've got another suspect on the scene. E, he's taking the ransom. Brilliant. Kuze's hysterics made Kano spin around. Sure enough, a foreign-looking man was sprinting away, a uh, Tachi case in hand. The mob of detectives scrambled to pursue. Before Kano could react, most of them had run off, leaving him to look after the original suspect. Well... What should I do with this guy, sir? He might have some connection to the kidnapper. Should I bring him in? Huh? Oh, sure. That'd be swell. I'm on it. With the help of one of the remaining detectives, Kano brought the suspect back to the Shibuya precinct. Look, how many times do we have to go through this? Cut the crap. In the interrogation room, the young man, who gave his name as Achi Endo, said fastly insisted, on his innocence. Why'd you try to steal that case? Kano watched Achi's face intently. Like I said, it looked heavy, so I was just trying to help her out. It's, it's great defense. It wasn't inconceivable that a young guy would want to help a pretty girl, but Hitomi had just been standing there, hardly in desperate need of, need of assistance. She hadn't set the case down, so figured there had to be something important inside. An entry from Kano's dick diary shot through his mind. Dick dictum number 25. When the tongue slips, grab it and yank out the truth. Classic advice for questioning. Something important you say, such as, I like what I know, Aji spat. He huffed and slumped back in his chair. The standard textbook back and forth had been going on for nearly an hour. Kano didn't mind. Chasing down criminals was all well and good, but... Questioning suspects was another key part of the job. Plenty of off-scene work went into cracking a case. Once again, he had Achi explain what he'd been doing, starting from the beginning. When Kano finally emerged from the interrogation room for a short break, he learned that there had been some progress on the case at the crime scene. The police hadn't been able to determine yet, however, was whether or not Maria was safe. Fighting back his anxiety, Kano consulted his dick diary. Dick Dictum number 54. Haste makes waste. He felt his tension subside, remembering the right maxim always helped. It was like casting a magic spell. Connell returned to confront Achi once more. You were there to act as a distraction, to mess up the investigation, weren't you? Huh? Achi looked a bit dumbfounded. What are you on about? Dick Dictum number 55. The truth hungers to be free. You hungry? Got some katsudon, if you like. Japanese dish consists of a bowl of white rice topped with bread, pork, cutlet, and egg. Sounds fucking delicious. There are several variations, such as sauce katsudon, where the egg is replaced with Worcestershire sauce, and miso katsudon, where the pork is stewed in miso. Not typically the sort of thing a policeman offers a suspect during an interrogation. This could be seen as baiting with food, and is to be avoided. Aji nodded silently. BAM! Archie devoured the bowl of katsudon with gusto. I was almost like, GUSTO! He looked like he hadn't eaten in a while. 
Alright, then, spill it. What's this guy after? Archie just shrugged. I don't know. He murmured. Got it. A thick slice of egg laid in pork between his teeth. How many accomplices do you have? Connor asked. But Archie just shook his head as he inhaled his food. Resignedly, Connor flipped through his notebook once more. Let's see. Number 115. Use the light to your advantage. As the minutes ticked past, he found himself referring to his book again and again, trying a dozen different methods to tease out whatever his suspect might be hiding. The experience began to feel strangely surreal, the two voices echoing hollowly in the interrogation room. Eventually, Connor looked at the clock and realized that the questioning had been going on for nearly five hours. He still hadn't made any headway. What was he supposed to do next? Tatino would know, but he sure didn't. But he sure didn't. Still, he was determined to do whatever he could to keep the victim and her family safe. Gritting his teeth in frustration, he perused the dick diary like it was scripture. Number 116. The monotonous questioning was clearly tiring Hachi out. His eyelids drooped like they were beginning to get heavy. Number 117. Get them when they're tired. Connor's eyes gleamed. You're part of some criminal gang, huh? Achi said, slumped forward heavily. Nodding off was basically the same as nodding yes, right? Mr. Kuze, I did it. The young guy we grabbed at the handoff site, he finally confessed to the crime. What? What are you talking about? Kuze laughed in disbelief. We're just about to apprehend the mastermind here. Huh? Kano clutched his cell phone, dumbstruck. Listen, why don't you... Ah, look, just wait there at HQ, okay? No, it can't be. I, I... After the kidnapping case were wrapped up, Kano ten tendered his resignation. Guess I'm not cut out to be a detective after all, he thought to himself. He dropped the dick diary on his desk as he left the Shibuya precinct for the last time. Damn. What? Huh? Kano wound up at the bad end. However, this does not mean that the choice you made for Kano was the wrong one. One of the other protagonists Achiendo has an impact on Kano's fate here. You can avoid a bad end by making proper decisions in another character's story. For a detailed hint, check the tip by underlining the bad end title. Press that, then that. Oh. Hint. Kano had every reason to suspect Achiendo, but arresting him turned out to be a mistake. If Achi hadn't approached Hitomi, this wouldn't have happened. Try playing Achi's story up to 10.30. Oh yeah, they're really playing up the timeline thing with the time there. And make a choice that keeps him from going up to her. If you do that, Kano won't even have a chance to arrest him and things should play out differently. So then I assume I play from Achi's standpoint. Don't go up and try to get the briefcase. And then I could come back to this storyline and it goes differently. I assume is what it's trying to teach me here. Interesting. This game has my interests high. You can now select Achiendo, one of the other protagonists. Let's follow Achi's story for a little while. Oh, I want to go to the time chart. Okay, I'm gonna get, we'll go for a little bit longer, not too much longer probably. I'm just gonna get one more drink here really quick, so just give me one quick sec.
All right, let's get a little bit of Ach's story here for a bit. Probably won't be going too much longer, but um, like I said, it was gonna be a short stream, but I am very interested in this game. I think, I think a visual novel series for the channel will be very good and interesting. A very chill series to come to. I'm a little spooked by that zoom in every time. Yo! Huh? Huh? Oh, yes. Bright. That is bright. Achiano called out at the door to his father's room. Okay, I'm heading out. Sure. His father sounded unconcerned. He didn't even open the door. Sure you don't want me to stay here in the shop? It's not like we're gonna we're gonna get any customers. Achi grimaced. Yeah, I guess not. The drawer by the front door held a stack of heavy duty trash bags. I just pulled a few of them out. Guess it's gonna be that kind of day. He stuffed the trash bags into his pocket, then slipped on his favorite pair of sneakers. The entryway to Hotch's home had led into the family shop. Various pieces of electronics were piled up, like so much junk in the tiny retail space. Size bump brought the risk of an avalanche. Hotch wove his way through the gaps and the appliances like a spelunker exploring cave. From Shibuya Station, if you make your way past the 109 building, then up through Dogenzaka, you'll come across an old shopping district. Nestled in its outskirts is Endo Electronics, the same place it's been for decades. Within its dimly lit interior, you'll find rows of wares all caked in dust. At a glance, you might well assume this place was closed. A mom and pop place like Endo's couldn't compete with the big consumer chains booming throughout Shibuya. So far, the store had remained in business. Thanks to the locals who appreciated that they made our made house calls to do repairs. But things weren't looking good for the future. Hachi, the eldest son and nominal successor to the business, had no interest whatsoever in working there. Hachi stepped out of the shop and into the sunny morning air. The good weather lifted his spirits. Alrighty, time to do this. He unfurled one of the big garbage bags, which caught the wind and fluttered like a cape. Then he slowly made his way towards Shibuya Station, scanning his surroundings all the while. Sheesh, this place is filthy. He paused to pick up a plastic bottle that had been tossed onto the ground. Then, with a heavy sigh, he slipped the crushed receptacle into his trash bag. He'd been picking up trash around town like this for about six months now. It had gotten so that the sort of gar it had gotten so that the sort of garbage most people would hardly notice stood out to him like a sore thumb. Most days he'd filled his trash bag to the top by the time he made it to uh, from his house in Dogenzaka to the train station. Today he was halfway to the station when a woman's anxious voice caught his attention. I'm sorry, I'm in a bit of a hurry here. He looked up and saw a timid looking woman being confronted by two men, one with brown hair, one with black. From the look of them, he guessed that the men were scouts for some hostess club. He ran into this sort of thing pretty frequently on his trash cleaning walks around town. Another kind of trash to take care of. Aji quickly interposed himself between the girl and the two recruiters. Hey, can't you see you're bothering her? Huh? Who the hell are you? The two men glared. Take a hike, pal. Achi stood his ground. Look, she ain't interested. You're just gonna have to find some other mark. The hustler's annoyance turned to open rage. Well, well, listen to you. Got a bit of a mouth, huh, buddy? The brown-haired thug smacks his lips around his chewing gum like a dog worrying. Worrying a bone? How about we take this someplace more quiet? Yeah? What this means can depend on the person speaking. To a young woman, let's go someplace more quiet. It might suggest a cafe or a park, but to a street punk, it might mean an alley where a passerby are unlikely to interrupt. Ah, uh, thanks for the tip there, game. 
The girl stood by uneasily watching the goings on. Hey, take it easy. I'm not looking for trouble. Is that supposed to be an apology? On your knees and beg, pal. The man spat his gum onto the ground. Achi stood, er, Achi looked down at the glistening wad of gum on the sidewalk. His last shred of goodwill vanished. You better pick that up right now. What? Didn't you hear me? Because I told you to get down on your knees and back. Achi's hand shot out, grabbing the man by the jaw. Whoa, whoa, easy, pal. The other man's bravado drained from his face. Those are some sound effects. Achi tightened his grip on the brown-haired hustler's jaw. Sweat dripped from the man's reddening brow. Uh, uh. The man struggled, but Achi just tightened his grip. Gum's a real pain in the ass to clean up after it's gotten stuck to the street, you know? Ever stopped to consider that? Wait, are... Are you... The other hustler's panicked eyes had fixed on Achi's chest. Gah! Oh, crap! Look at that shirt. Look at that shirt. Take a look at his snout. That shirt, man. The guy's voice was starting to break. That's mean clean. A guy with a mean clean shirt carrying around a trash bag. That means you're... His face went pale. Gah. Mean gleam. The other man echoed the words through his held shut jaw, tears welling up in his eyes. Get it right, pal. Achi cl uh, clenched the man's jaw harder still. It's mean clean. Ow, 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 We're We're sorry, man. You're Achi, right? Dude, we honestly had no idea. Come on, man. You gotta cut us some slack. The man scrambled to snatch the water of gum off the street, stuffing it into his pants pocket. Finally, Achi let go of his companion. Brown-haired hustler's face was twisted up with fear. Tears streaming down his face. His cheeks. Just making up words. Gasping out hasty apologies, the two thugs scampered off. Um, hey, so... A shy smile came to the girl's face. Oh, yeah, what is this gonna be? Ryoko Kakanuma, second-year student at Midoriyama Academy's Law School. Hustlers managed to corner her while she was on her way to her part-time job at a cafe. It's a popular plot and trashy e-novels for the main character. Fall in love with a hustler like these guys. But such things rarely happen in real life. Good. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. No, I apologize. Huh? The girl stared in surprise. You'll run into creeps like that now and then. But don't hold it against us. Shibuya's a good town. Uh, yeah, okay. Achi gave a quick wave, then turned, continuing on his way down. Dogenzaka. Achi was Shibuya born and raised. He was keenly aware of all the changes the ward had sen seen since he was a kid. Grocer stalls and inconspicuous little side streets, tiny parks nestled between buildings. Achi knew it was all like the back of his hand. Trash, human or otherwise, had no place in this town. Not on his watch. I fucking love him. An eco-friendly fucking good Samaritan. Achi made his way down towards Shibuya Station. Throngs of people shuffled to and fro across the scramble. The view shifted constantly from one moment to the next, almost as if the city itself were alive. And if the city was a, thri a living thing, then Shibuya Station was its heart. With streets like Bunkamura Dori and Center Guy, serving as the art uh, arteries pumping a bloodstream made of people. Today, as ever, the heart was pumping that blood to every nook and cranny of Shibuya. And there was Achi, just another part of this great urban organism. Guess I'm one of the city's white blood cells. Or, wait, maybe I'm a red blood cell. Hmm, hold on. Is that right? Or did I have it right the first time? White blood cells... Uh, eliminate pathogens from the bloodstream. Red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body. Achi was probably thinking of white blood cells. Thanks, Gabe. Just in case you don't know biology. Emerging from his reverie, he noticed a rather conspicuous young woman standing by the statue of Hachiko outside Shibuya Station. 
Oh, she's totally my type. To be up someone's alley, to be someone's cup of tea. <laughs> oh, game. Wonder if she's a model or a small time actress or something. Looks like she's waiting for someone. Probably another guy. Dang. Good looking as she was, there was no way she wasn't already taken. What kind of guy scored a girl like that? Probably the rich ass CEO of an IT company or something. Crouching down to tie off the trash bag, continued gazing wistfully at the girl. Then he noticed something peculiar. She was carrying an Atachi case, the kind of businessman might use. It was a large case and apparently so heavy, she was struggling to hold it despite using both hands. Uh, uh, you've reached a decision point. Let's have Achi not approach Tomi. Use that to select an option, then press X. So it wants me to pick B. But first, I gotta dump this trash. She looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Now, Achi won't approach Tomi which means he will avoid being arrested by Kano. At the same time, Kano's fate will also change, and he will no longer wind up at a bad end. So, let's switch back to Kano's story using the time chart. Press that to open it. Interesting, so it's immediately being like, oh, you immediately changed something. Whoa, okay, this is the time chart. Shows the protagonist's progression through the story. Man, this seems a lot like, uh, Uh, like the, um, Jiro Time Dilemma series. Serum points are marked with the branching arrows looking picture. Kano's fate has changed based on Achi's actions. Select Kano's 1030 block, then press X. This one, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can see... I see, I see, I see. Wait, did I? I was just pressing some buttons because I was trying to see. I think this was the thing I was supposed to go to, anyway. I suppose you could call it that. Kano gave a wry chuckle at his partner's lack of shame. There he is! Kusei's voice chirped suddenly through Kano's earpiece. What the hell is this man? Look at this guy! The man in the black coat, he's not Japanese. Looks to be in his early 30s. Previously, Achi got mixed up with Kano and the police, but now, another man has appeared instead. By changing what Achi did, you also changed Kano's story. Well, well, well. A foreign man had emerged. A crazy white man had emerged from the crowd about 15 feet from where Hitomi was standing. He made his way toward her, his expression blank. He didn't match the description Tomi had given them, but Kano felt a jolt in nerves all the same. Maybe the kidnapper was using a compass to snatch the ransom payment. Alright, Sasayama raised an eyebrow. This may be our guy. This was it. Kano swallowed a lump in his throat. He bent his knee, ready for action. Blood rushed to his leg muscles, banishing the stiffness that had begun to take hold. Uh oh. Was this the culprit? Or perhaps... The stranger took hold of the Itachi case. It was him! In mass, the detectives began to close in. Let's go, Kano. On it. Sasayama and Kano leapt into action. But they never expected what happened next. With the case clutched in both arms, the man veered suddenly, running right toward them. 
What the fuck? Keep out. Keep out. Connor's story has suddenly hit a keep out. <laughs> keep out refers to a point in the story where your progress is currently stopped. In order to advance beyond a keep out, you need to jump. Jump from another protagonist story. At 10.30, Achi has the text. Young man in a suit set as red keywords. What? Young man set as red keywords. Checking these red keywords will allow you to jump from Achi's story back to Kano's. Now, head back to Achi's story and keep an eye out for that key phrase. Whoa. Try following the story from Achi at 10.30. Approach the girl. I was trying to see... This is kind of cool setup. Um, I think. Well, I'll go into the story a bit, and then we'll uh, we'll take an end for the night. Uh. So I think I go directly to this. I can directly jump to the. The actual split decision, I guess. Okay, and you can see that the B has been chosen, so it's like grayed out. <sighs> That's interesting. So we did one thing to change the story in one timeline. And then it wants me to go back and choose the thing that we decidedly said ends the other storyline, but since we've already seen... Oh, wait. Oh, wait, no, maybe I'm not choosing the other one. It wasn't allowing me to. But first, I gotta dump this trash. Maybe I'm just supposed to be continuing this story. He looked around to see if there was a garbage bin nearby. Huh? A man had come up, signed the girl. Oh shit, here we go. Yep. He was dressed in black, and he wasn't Japanese. He looked like they were having a com it looked like they were having a conversation. The girl nodded tensely at something the man said. Achi stared. Something tells me that's not her boyfriend. I must kill. The girl handed the Itachi's case over to the man took hold of it with his right hand and began walking briskly away. Whoa! 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 I said whoa before the game said whoa. A nearby homeless man suddenly leapt over Achi and broke into a run as if he'd been waiting for this very moment. Yuji Sasayama, a detective with the Shibuya Precinct, known as the cosplay detective due to the strange outfits he wears while on stakeouts. He's partnered with Shin Shinya Shinya Kano for the kidnapping investigation. Sprinting alongside him was a young man in a suit. Some words in the text appear in red. Red text denote, denotes important keywords that let you jump between different protagonists. It's an interesting system. Uh, I'm gonna sneeze here. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. This allows you to shift between characters at specific points. These can also allow you to clear out a keep out in another character's story and let you read on. If you come across red text, press that to underline it, then press X. A window will appear, allowing you to jump from one protagonist to another at that point, and then press X to continue the other character's story after the keep out. Give it a try. It won't let me. It wants me to... Jumping! By performing a jump from this screen, you can advance another protagonist's story past to keep out. Press X to confirm and jump over to Kano's story. 
Alright, let's jump! This game wants me to just to keep playing it. Alright, but I just got the save thing, so... I assume... It saved there when it jumped, so... That will do it for the stream tonight, like I said, short. Um, I am very interested in this game. From, from the couple of people that I've seen vouch for this game, they said it's very good. And I think it is. I think it's gonna be interesting. I think it'll be a nice, get, relaxing game to stream, you know? Um, so yeah, streams this weekend. Uh, expect an earlier and then a later. I don't know how early when I say earlier. It kind of depends on how I wake up and everything. Um, but I would say decently early. And most likely, like I said, will be just to check out Death Stranding for a bit. Um, after a several month uh, hiatus from that, um, kind of would be interesting to see how that's all gone down. See if my structures and shit are still built. Um, and then probably a night stream. Um, not sure what that will be. Maybe we'll be back to this. Maybe we'll bust out fucking uh, the, the alien game. Sure, humans, that's what it's called. Maybe we'll actually get some uh, progress in that, because that's been a while. That went on the back burner uh, for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I've still played a little bit of Final Fantasy VII Remake off stream. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I actually think I'm going to go for the Platinum in that, so that should be fun. Um, it's just a game I'm popping in every once in a while, just kind of doing a couple different things in. Um, so... It's it's gonna be uh, a bit not not super difficult and not super time consuming, but a little bit of each of those, um, just because I have to basically replay the game on hard, and it's gonna be kind of difficult on some of those later chapters. But it's fun. Video games are fun. Um, I hope everyone had a good week. I hope everyone's ready for the weekend here. I'm sure most people are desperately wanting it. Another long crazy week we had i'm going to retire early for the night here uh catch up on some sleep because the least past couple nights have not slept well for various reasons um so yeah gotta take it easy for the rest of the night back tomorrow for a couple times and then sunday i'm sure there will be at least one thing one stream but yeah we're gonna do our uh we haven't done it in a while just because of the weird final fantasy weeks um but the old, uh, the old two streams in the day for tomorrow. So, uh, I'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your Friday night. And, uh, still stay, stay safe. Stay relaxed, stay calm. Take it easy.